Joining us now is Nico Luciani. He's the director of corporate power over at the Roosevelt Institute. Nico, uh, welcome to the show. We really appreciate it. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So you guys wrote an interesting new report. Let's put this up there on the screen about inflation, about corporate power um, that we've been looking at and paying a lot of attention here to on the show. So why don't you break us down for the audience? What is driving a lot of the inflation in their lives? How are corporations responding to this moment? And is it fair? You know, are they taking advantage of everybody? Yeah, well, we tried to step back a little bit from the very live debates we've been having as a country on your show about the um, causes of inflation and therefore the policy responses. And we wanted to see uh, from a somewhat of a, a different data source um, whether we could assess out whether it's a demand story, you know, too much money, whether it's a supply story, too few goods and services, or is there a layer here of um, companies actually taking advantage of the moment to be able to um, increase their profits? And so we looked um, not at sort of macroeconomic variables for this particular piece, but actually at the income and cash flow statements of um, companies across the U.S. economy. Mm -hmm. um, we looked from 1955 all the way up to uh, 2021 when we had the latest data. Uh, in 2021, we pulled in um, almost 4,000 companies' um, income and cash flow statements. And in that, we wanted to look at this really crucial indicator, which is markups. That is, what's the difference between a company's price, essentially, and their marginal costs? With the sort of thought there, uh, if companies' costs are... Um, stabilizing and their prices continue to go up, um, then that company has some sort of power in the market that allows them to do that, right? If it was a competitive market, right. um, then prices and, and a marginal cost would essentially be the same. Um, what we found, um, actually to our surprise, was um, you know we've seen an increase in markups since around 1980, and that's um, sort of a trend that's been uh, long going. But we saw in 2021 really this sharp increase almost like a singularity line, sharp uh, upward increase in markups. Um, at this point in 2021, uh, companies across the U.S. are uh, on aggregate, um, on an average, are increasing uh, their price about 76% higher than their marginal cost. That tells us that these companies are not just price takers waiting for the market to determine what the prices are, but they're active price makers in setting the price um, on the market. That's um, really interesting. And then, yeah. Dug, yeah, yeah, we can dig in a little bit more into the details in a second. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think what's interesting to me about that, though, is that 2021, I don't think there's any, uh, there's no debate, basically, that corporations were taking advantage of monopoly power in order to set prices where they wanted. What about the current data? Because we're also trying to get our minds around what's happening right now at this moment. What do you think, Nico? Well, I mean, unfortunately, the firm level data is looking backwards, like a lot of data, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we don't know for sure. There's some um, new, um, uh, the St. Louis Fed or San Francisco Fed uh, that came out with a paper that was looking at more at 2022 data. And um, that particular piece says, you know, pretty unambiguously 50% of the increase uh, in inflation in their mind is due to supply factors, right? Um, whether that's supply chains, not enough workers in the workforce, other issues. Um, not the demand factors that seem to be driving the Fed. Um, today, I mean, um, if you look at the market power side, we've had 30 years, right, of companies increasing their market share in particular um, industries, uh, and, that, and, and 30, 40 years of the shareholder primacy model where companies are looking to hit their earnings expectations on a quarterly to quarterly basis, and then setting backwards what their pricing strategies would be based on that profit expectation. Um, and so when we hit the pandemic, uh, that those trends continued and exacerbated. So to me, there's while we don't have the exact data for 2022 and markups, I would be surprised if there's going to be much of a change just because we're talking about right. three or four um, decades of structural changes in our economy that have okay. allowed this to happen. Yeah, so let's go Let's go dig deeper then. So if we're talking about structural problem like this, a lot of it comes down to monopoly power. It's not just the advantage, but the structure itself. What are the underlying remedies that make sense in order to do something about this? Yeah, well, I think what we found in this is that um, there is th these markups are uh, have changed over time. They've responded to policy signals, and so they can be decreased. Um, whereas many would argue there's not much we can do uh, uh, through Fed policy, which won't have really damaging effects. Uh, when it comes to uh, managing or, or dampening corporate profits and corporate markups, that's something we can do, and we have tried and true. 
uh, mechanisms for that, whether that's uh, really uh, assertive antitrust enforcement. Um, uh, some of that is happening, it could go even more. Um, there is uh, a lot of discussion recently of uh, resuscitating some of the ideas of the uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt in, um, <laughs> administration mm -hmm. around uh, a World War II style excess profits tax, um, where essentially over a certain amount of profits, uh, you deem it excess and that gets taxed away. So it would, it would really reduce pretty sharply the incentive or the interest of companies um, to have profits over a certain amount and therefore to price over a certain amount. Um, that's another another example of, 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 you know, if we can think outside the, the box, right. we, there are policy tools to decrease those markups. Really interesting. Well, look, I think everybody should go and take a look at the report. I think the data you guys lay out is very compelling, and I appreciate you breaking it down for us. Uh, thank you very much, Nico. Thanks so much. Absolutely, man. Take care. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Crystal is sick, but she'll be back here on Thursday, hopefully, uh, and she'll be feeling better. Just a reminder, if you can go ahead and buy tickets to that event, we'll have links down in the description for all our videos. If you're not a premium subscriber, what are you waiting for? They bought more than half the tickets before the things even went on sale, so if you want pre-sale access. And awesome, just the ability in order to support our work here at the show. We deeply appreciate it, and we will see you all on Thursday. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.